there are many times that um, in our relationship with my wife, sometimes I would annoy her and uh, we have to sit down. We have to find time and sit down to deal with that thing. Then she would offend me and say, I'm sorry. And I say, it's okay. I said, it's okay. You mean it's okay? I said, it's okay. But we've not sat down. I said, but for me, it's okay. Now if we sit down, we must talk about other things. <laughs> so when I tell people it is well, they say, no, 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 pastor, I know. I know I've, I, uh, it's not. I say, but it is well. Me, I'm done. Praise the Lord. Cool. I think Africa has so many challenges that offense should not be top on our scale. We have a generation to take care of. We still have mud in our streets. You go abroad and you enter your bedroom with your shoes. These shoes, if you keep them here in the office, by next Sunday, you have to polish. So we, we really have big problems. And so for us to come to church and to start to beef with people is just off. And so we can't be self-centered at this level of poverty. We can't feel big at this level. Someone wears a, a smart watch and they're feeling big. I don't wear a watch and I don't care. And so I believe that every one of us has a window in this life. Whether you choose to pass through life offended, you choose to pass through life feeling you're on top of the world. I went to Budo and I saw young men who felt they were on top of the world. I used to come from ginger. Some, my mom never stepped in Budo. Sometimes they would leave me at school. And the kids I play with soccer, what, drop me money to take me back home. But I was performing way better than these guys who they were picking on time. The choice was mine. Whether to say, oh God, you've not given us money, I have nothing to, or to delight in what God has given me. The choice was mine, and the choice is yours. You have a few years on this planet, or a few years of strength. And you have a responsibility to be the architect of those years. You know, my wife was telling me that the scripture which says that we are the salt of the earth. Huh? We are the light of the world. A city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. So, number one, God has no agenda of hiding you. Number two, a city set on a hill. So God is in the business of lifting people. His only problem is capacity. You can't handle. He feels for you. It's like me telling Deborah, you know what? You, you find me at home. Even if I had a car and I'm saying, Deborah, you drive home. Capacity. It's capacity. Praise the Lord. So the things of God seriously, are not just spiritual. Otherwise, God should not have created you with a mind. You have to think. You, no wonder Jesus asked those people, but you guys look to the weather and you say it's fair weather. You look, it's red, it's going to rain. Why can't you tell the signs of the times? So you have 40 years, maybe you're 30. Maybe you're going to retire at 70, like the normal retiring, 70. So if you're 30 and going to retire at 70, how much time do you have? 40 years. That's all you have if you're 30. Now, Abamuku 30, we've eaten off some. So we don't have time. And we have a destiny to fulfill. And our reward in heaven is based on that destiny. Ricky Joyner said when he had a vision of heaven, there were people who were in the in the third heaven up there. And there were people who were in the first heaven. Like near earth. Basically your life is just different. That God is now in control. Not President Museven. But you're almost on the fringes. And how you invest that time. So the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17. That when a man is in Christ. He is a new. By the way it does not literally mean. That you, you are short, now you're tall. But, but it's, it's a, 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 a figure of speech. It's like your whole world has been opened up. Do you know why believers build TVs and not universities? Do you know why big pastors in, in Africa build TVs and not universities? Because they never went to university, first and foremost. I'm sorry to say this, but it's what it is. 
It's not shameful. It's where we are. They don't see conquering the world in terms of science and innovation and ability. Every time these guys sing, I come and comment. Davis is in the background. But for him to get the sound to come out of here, it's a science that he operates. And that is God at work in Davis' life. And so when a man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Just think that there is no limit to what that young man can become. So your world is ahead of you. I don't believe that churches are supposed to be places which we just feel. No, 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 no. Every man has to be accounted for. What do you dream about in a slight moment when you've forgotten your problem? And so the Bible says the old is gone. You need to face the new you. You need to face the possibilities that lie ahead. In you are leaders. In you are innovators. In you are managers. In you are great men and women. God never replicated himself into a failure. Because he says in his image and likeness, he created you. Your whole world is ahead of you. So God didn't put us here to become entitled. God put us here to awaken to our true identity. Man, if there is anything I ever believe, just to prove a point that the world is under our feet. We need to rise. The Bible, someone said that there is a crown of glory over your head and you need to rise tall enough to wear it. Praise the Lord. So when God, when God looks at us, and looks at community. He looks at relationships that amplify potential. So God is a God of relationships. Thank God that you were born in a family. So you have blood relationships. I can see people building relationships. But you can see. Don't, don't go too far. Don't tell them your things. But that relationship is a destiny breaker, is a destiny connector. It's a destiny connector. And so we see in Genesis 3, I don't have time, in Genesis 4, when Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel also brought a firstborn of the flock and their fat, and the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry. And his countenance fell. God did not say Abel's gift was first and Cain was second. No. Cain's offering was not a good offering. That's all. That's all. And so most of us live in that world of Gundi is number one, I'm number two. If this man becomes rich, all the money is going to disappear. I will not get. So, Cain was offended. No wonder the Bible says, and the Lord comes to him and tells him, if you do well, if you do well, won't you be accepted? This world is not a world of competition. It, competition is man-made. God created us all, all men as number one. No man is under the other. And when he gave us dominion, he never created us to rule over another. I am I'm your leader here. I'm a pastor. I'm not your ruler. You know, Pastor Michael is the most anointed man of God in House of Revival. And then also me, I come and try and, and enforce it. Huh? And start living in my own bubble. Every man was created number one. No man is made in the image of another. Everyone is created in the image of God. What I have access to, you have access to. What, I don't know your, your big preachers. What TDJX has access to, you have access to. So this race is not a race against your peers. It's a race of destiny. It's a race of destiny. The opportunity I have in being here, my work, one of my callings is to challenge you to become the best that you can ever become. And to provide a stepping stone. 
for you to go. There is no competition in the kingdom of God. Every one of us is like a puzzle piece that is uniquely made. Haven't you read Psalms 139 that says that before you were formed in your mother, I knew you. And he has crafted us uniquely. The fingerprints on our hands are so unique. Hallelujah. There is no competition. So you can turn to your neighbor and say, don't create competition here. It is not there. Competition is a form of insecurity. God tells the end from the beginning and then he comes and begins to pick you and places you there. Isaiah 46, 10. He says he has the big picture. He tells the end. So you have no business getting mad when God is placing Judith where she belongs for crying out loud. Let her thrive. That's the part that God has given them. There is just room for everyone. You just imagine in a country like this where there is just so much to be done. We have no business being offended. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In this world, obedient men and women are being placed by God. In, in, in divine assignments, in families, in generations, in people groups. Praise the Lord. Therefore, all warfare, that confusion, that fight is about destiny. This one, you should write it. Someone has beef with you, it's about destiny. Someone is not happy that you're singing in the worship team, it's about destiny. Someone is not happy that you're dressing well, you're no longer dressing in kunks, it is about destiny. Satan comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. Therefore, the seeds of destiny are what truly cross the boundaries of generations. I ring for you and your legacy to cross from this generation into the next generation. It's not your house. It will be outdated, however modern. Luke chapter 12 verse 15 says, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist of, no, is it derived from your possessions. Everyone has a part of the whole picture. Everyone, you think about it. Do you know that bazungus in our dispensation are already afraid that Africa's population is growing and they are young people. How do we reduce it? Why? Their population is going. Whether they fight, whether they use anti-aging, whether they do what, their time is up. The Bill Gates of this world, they, they don't have more than 10 years of being able to speak and make noise. Can you imagine? Now you, you're young. You just need to be jumping like a, a cricket. You know, there are guys I ask and they say, I'm 21. <laughs> <laughs> How can you be 21? What do you think when you're 21? 18. I can begin to live life in the first lane. A man's life. If a man's life does not consist of his possessions, therefore what does it consist of? What does it consist of? relationships. Matthew chapter 5 verse 43. 44 says, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Praise the Lord. So the kingdom priority is God and then people. So true success is a breakthrough with people. Those are the seeds that are going to go from this generation to another. Where Pastor Sam's children say, man, Israel, you are my brother. Come and say, Isabel, you are my brother. Our land is your land. Our success is your success. Our breakthrough is your, your breakthrough. You can come in any time. Think about it, Sam. Do you know that you have me? 
Yeah, your, your wedding becomes my wedding. Your trouble becomes my trouble. Your need becomes my need. Just imagine us. You know, no wonder those guys used to make covenants. And they would cut hands. And they would take beans. And they would eh, eh, put in the blood and eat. And say, this is the wealthiest place. If you give all your possessions to the poor. And give over your body to hardship. But you do not have love. You have nothing. Then he says love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not puffed up. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. And keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. Love never fails.